and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Tuesday, May 2nd, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember, everyone, you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. Nathan, how are you doing today? Uh, pretty good. I was just playing some Pokemon Moon because, uh, well, I was reminded to play it because my, my roommate lost his 2DS with his Pokemon Sun, which he was going to play. Sure. And tomorrow's a Pokemon tournament, I believe. Um, but I'm not nearly ready because I had the entire month to plan and I did absolutely nothing besides think about playing Double Duck. Uh, is that a, a strategy in Pokemon? Yeah, it's where you use a uh, Pelipper Gold Duck. Oh, okay, sure. That sounds good. I like Gold Duck, you know. Yeah, and and, and it runs. And I feel like Magnezone's better than Tapu Koko for the electric choice because Magnezone traps Celesteela, and Celesteela is goddamn prominent. And so few people know what the hell you're talking about. That's fine. That's fine, Nathan. It's like it's okay. I'm used to. I'm used to that. So I'm I'm playing on my moon, and I want to get my moon to the end because I want to use my moon cartridge primary. Or I need to transfer all my Pokemon from my sun to my moon so that I can reset my moon back to um, non hacked settings. <laughs> Did you ever get your fucking hacker thing back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still use it? Uh, every now and then, mostly to fix like natures or IVs. When you're bored. Yeah, and I, when I feel like when I don't feel like breeding with my with my perfect ditto. Well, also, I mean, you, you mentioned yesterday that you just don't play video games much anymore. Yeah, saves me a lot of time. That, does it? I mean, saves you a lot of time for what? To just watch a whole shitload of shows? Yeah. Is that is no? That... It saves me a lot of time because like if once I build that team, if I feel like it, I can just go online and play it. Actually, I want to build a sixes team. But I want to feature Sudowoodo because, you know, Sudowoodo is fucking hilarious. I saw some emojis come through, but I can't... It doesn't show me who's sending the emojis on the uh, the Facebook Live, but uh, I love you too, my, people. My mom. My mom. Wonderful. I'm okay with this. Anything else exciting happened today, Nathan? How was work? Mm, I decided to not take a lunch, and I got to go home an hour early. Is your lunch normally an hour long? Yeah. Really? Cool. Yeah. Uh, so I got home, and... Ooh, I watched an episode of Bill Nye, the the new Bill Nye episodes, and um, and I watched Sausage Party. Oh, how was that? Fucking hilarious. Oh, is it as terrible and raunchy as it was? It truly looked. Oh God, yes, yes, it was, and it had Edward Norton in it, and I didn't realize it was Edward Norton until they they, like, quite literally told you it's Edward Norton. Oh yeah, straight up. Yeah. Like, wait, did they tell you in, like, the, the, the like, opening credits, or did they nope. straight up be like, hey, that's Edward Norton? That, that's kind of what they did, yeah. What was he playing as? Uh, that's kind of a dead giveaway. Is it? I don't know if I want to give it away to people who haven't seen it yet and kind of want to see it. <laughs> Fucking say it. Okay, spoilers, guys. Spoilers. You're gonna <laughs> skip, like, two seconds, three seconds, maybe five seconds, all right? Ready? He was the bagel. I don't get it. I, I, You won't get it. You haven't watched it. But people who start watching it and have heard that spoiler, they'll be like, holy shit. Okay. Is it truly relevant that he's Edward Norton? No, but... Okay, kind of. They mention it at the end. Okay. I'll pretend like that makes sense. You don't have to. You just have to watch it eventually. I probably won't. Yeah, that's fine. So, um... Guess what? Guess what? I made literally like ten minutes ago. Uh, a poopy. Um, I mean, I did the. I didn't actually make a poopy, but I farted. Ew. Yeah, I've had some gas today. Not that anyone needs to know that, but dude, no. Dude, same. I ate like half of a thing of ice <laughs> cream last night. Well, here you go. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit. Told you we needed it. You have to do it three times in a row. Why? Yes. Oh shit. oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Can you hear the fade out? Yeah. Okay. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Happy now? Yeah. Okay. Also. You make me sad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, I told you. That's why we needed it from Monty Python. You make me oh, sad. 
there's a couple other ones that we've mentioned that we just haven't gotten that makes me kind of sad. Well, I I don't remember what they were anymore. Like I've slowly been grabbing them as I can remember them, and I made sure to make a note to remember them. Like I typed it in the chat just as like a mental thing to write something down in some fashion, and that helped me remember to go grab it. I don't remember what any of the other ones were like. Oh yeah, we need that. I don't remember where they are. Okay. So, but I mean. If you do think of it, just tell me, and I'll type it into the chat, and hopefully that'll be enough. Like, that that's what made me remember this. You make me sad. Is that I typed it into chat. We have Wilhelm scream, right? Yeah, it's what introduces my little what did I care yeah. about. That's right. Good. Uh, I'm, cool. not, I'm not sure what else we need, but this is your ever-loving button. It's a pun! <laughs> I think that button gets hit the most. <laughs> <laughs> good i mean the most oh god i hate how my laugh is evolving into fucking kuzco you know what we do need to be able to hit more though what we just got a letter we just got a letter but we didn't i forgot what i forgot that we had that yep but we we need some mail people so let us know send us in some mail well, we don't just need male people we need female people and and other kinds of people who identify differently <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I, I I need to just fig we need to figure out a way to just set that up as a button for you that you keep in your hand. No, we don't because you never stop hitting it. Ah, oh, God, I'm just so excited. <laughs> like every fucking time, it would just be like space button. <laughs> fucking pun, hit the button. Windmill when it. it from behind. I, I need to figure out a better place to set the iPad because the iPad is not in a good like it, it. It's in a good spot for me to see it, but not necessarily to reach the buttons. I need it like. Like right, like where my keyboard is, but I also need to use my keyboard. <laughs> your lap. That's not good enough. You put on your nap. My nap? Yeah. Are, are you taking a nap? It's where you put your kins. What? Your napkins. Oh, okay. They're kins. For, they're, yeah, they're kins for your nap. Is, is that, wait, is that really what it is? <laughs> I don't fucking know. God damn it, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's actually uh, let's actually get into some news, shall we? Yeah. Ten. Denmark gives two-year ban to six foreign religious quote hate preachers. Oh shit! This is submitted by Trojan Horse King to our World News. Um, and it, it didn't actually paste into the the fucking video. It's a great start. So uh, Denmark has had it with all your goddamn bullshit words that you're spreading around about people that they might actually care about. And they're letting you know that you're not welcome in their country. Uh, they have specifically singled out six foreign um, public speakers that have been well known for either extremist or just very uh, hate-filled speech. This could be anything from you know on, like bordering on terrorist speech to we spoke uh, about a year ago, I think, at this point of the preacher that was just getting banned from country after country that was from Georgia that was just spreading around anti-gay stuff all over the place. Yep, I do remember that. I do remember that. Th this is an, a, an additional extent to that. Now, he is not one of the six people named, but there are six people, and I, I have no reason or desire and to give them any level of credit by giving you their names. If you truly want them, the link is in the... the, the it'll be... Well, actually, it's not on Facebook. It'll be everywhere else, though. Um, hmm, interesting. I need to figure out a way to fix that because they should have the links on Facebook. Anyway, so... But either way, Denmark has said, you know, you're not welcome here with your hate spewing bullshit. Get the fuck out. Good. Especially that preacher guy who's felt just hate filled. Like, I hope no place really accepts him. Well, in every place he did go, he promptly got kicked out from. Good. Because they were like, whoa, whoa, what? Get, no. You're worse than the Westboro Baptist Church. And yeah, and that's hard. Yeah. You you oh. you have to put literal effort into this. Yeah, like holy fuck, it's a lot of time and uh, and money. Like, for, yeah, for hatred. At least though, it is good to see that more and more countries are becoming intolerant of things such as this. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Nope, wrong direction. I don't know how. I sit in the same spot, but my camera has always just moved just a little bit. 
My my camera's on top of my monitor, so sometimes it looks like I'm looking off to the side because I'm looking at the stream. Dude, sometimes my... sometimes I'm looking at my keyboard because like uh, when when we used to do the podcast uh, without the video, I would always just like look in random places because it was all just me reacting. Sure, yeah, no, I totally understand, and that's like I I have the because I I do watch the the stream not the stream video on Facebook. I have the chat room for the Facebook open over here, and so and also the show notes over here, so it kind of looks like I'm looking weird, but otherwise everything is over here to try and make it look like I'm somewhat looking in the right direction of the camera uh, it, it doesn't work the best though but with how many things I have to pay attention to that's not exactly possible anyway also like my two favorite stage performers had like um, uh, fucking oh god what is it the fear of being in front of people really yeah who are they Mitch Hedberg don't know he would constantly look down and around and he had shades on um and uh, Lemmy Killmeister, who would position his mic up here so that he would constantly be singing upwards. You know, it, it, it actually, that the, for a, it, the way that you, because you looked away from your mic, it made it where it sounded like you had moved your mic up there. <laughs> oh, like up there? Yeah, yeah, like up there. <laughs> That's cool. Don't, don't, don't stay like that, though, please. No, no, no. Um, and, yeah, I, I suppose you're right, Kendall. We should still be tolerant of the intolerant. Well, he here's the thing, though. And the Kendall's specific thing is she says, I hear being intolerant of intolerance makes you just as bad as the intolerant people. Yo, dog, I heard you like being intolerant, so I added some intolerance to your intolerancy. But I'm with already intolerant. <laughs> but <laughs> My gut hurts so much. I ate so much ice cream earlier. Well, here's the thing, though, is like, okay, if you don't want to just become intolerant of people that spew hate speech... What do you do then? Like, what is the proper reaction to them? Because often there is no discussing anything with them because they just spew more vitriol. You have to forcefully show them love. With handcuffs? Forcefully. With... No, not that kind of love, Michael. So... I... That's rape. <laughs> That's so... I... Wait, I don't understand. Yeah, he probably doesn't want to be handcuffed and and shown love like that. Let's see, God, what the what the hell is happening here? I'm so lost. My my computer's having those CPU issues again, and it makes me very sad. That's all right. These <laughs> these little happy faces and hearts. Okay, so the hearts. And some of the smiley faces are going perfectly, but whenever uh, Josh pops up with like a, a thumb or something, uh, like half of them lag really hard and they just kind of sputter around. You know what that might be? Huh. That might be because my computer's choking like an asshole right now. Oh. And I'm not sure how to choke, fix it. Choke, 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 choke. I need a, I need a new computer. Hey, everybody, Patreon. It's actually a good book. Chuck Palahniuk. Choke? Yeah. Uh, hey everybody, uh, patreon.com slash daily internet. Help me upgrade my computer so we won't have it. See, and now it stopped. I don't understand. Hey everyone, go to your local bookstore and pick up a Chuck Palahniuk book. I, 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 Whether it be Fight Club or Choke or Guts. If, or not, no, Guts was a short story. If I pause the stream on... I Can I? Uh, I... I can't. How do I stop the, the video on Facebook? Pause. If I pause that, wait, why did you do that? Ah, oh, shit, this is stupid. I agree. Um, Josh, stop spamming for a second. You're making my computer cry, and I need to try and figure out how to make it not cry when, when that happens. Because that seems to be, like, for some reason, those little emojis are seriously making my computer just cry from trying to process them. Ugh. I need a better computer so damn bad. <laughs> like I can't, I can't even I can't even click on the show notes to change it over to the next topic. Oh my goodness. Yep. I can do it. No, you can't change the stuff in the stream though. Oh. <laughs> Damn it, you're right. All right, I got I got there. 9. Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy have been renewed until 2020. This is submitted by Bunny Pouch to our television. Bunyip pouch? I don't know. So first off, Bunyip. I didn't even know these shows were still like live supported shows. Hell yeah, they are. Fucking Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy are. Yeah, Wheel of Fortune is going on to its thirty seventh year. 
Um, Holy shit, and really? Je Jeopardy is on its 36th. Fuck. Yeah, with the same host Holy the whole time. That's consistent work. Yeah, it, that's job security. God damn it, Trebek. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, if you like to watch Wheel of Fortune and stuff, then ballin'. Well, you know what I like? What What do you like? Ducks. Yeah? And women who jazzercise. Okay, Josh stopped spamming the stream with emojis, and it allowed me to pause the stream, which now means that the CPU usage of my, uh... Of Chrome has drastically reduced. So, hey Josh, spam the spam the chat with emojis some more, and Nathan, tell me when he spams them so I can see if my computer cries. Okay. If he's uh, let's let's get this entire chat room in. If he's still in here. Well, Josh or or Kendall, if you're still here, or Mom. Either I way, saw Corey earlier. I don't know if Corey's still here. So basically, though. Um, they they weren't originally up for they were going to be running through 2017 into 2018. They have now been renewed for 2019 and 2020. These these shows are just going to go on for probably forever, right? I don't know. I do do you see them dying if the hosts leave? If anything, we're going to figure it out in 2020. Well, maybe we might find it out sooner than that cuz they'll probably be if they do get renewed, they'll get renewed before 2020. Yeah, but we're not going to figure it out before then. I Damn it, now I need to know. I wonder if Wheel of Fortune has ever had a repeat puzzle. I don't know. I, 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 okay, I'm just going to see if it's something that can Google that is Googleable. Has Wheel of Fortune... Oh, um, Josh has been spamming, I forgot to tell you. Has Wheel of Fortune ever repeated a puzzle? He stopped now, but... Uh, let's see. Have they re ever reissued questions or puzzles on Jeopardy, oh. Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune? There goes Kendall. She, she added a bunch. Thank you, Kendall. Uh, my computer is doing just fine. How many f angry faces can we get? Urgh. Um, let's see. Uh, Show me your war face. Jeopardy doesn't reuse the exact wording, but they have definitely had reoccurring questions that they will rephrase. Um, and Wheel of Wheel of Fortune repeats puzzles all the damn time, but they'll sometimes switch a word or two. But usually, uh, every episode has at least one puzzle that was used within the last ten years or so. Oh, that's cool. Neat. Yeah. Also, um, because this is just so so Vanna White, right? The the beautiful woman who hits the little panels on Wheel of Fortune. Sure. She has never worn the same outfit twice on the show. Uh oh! Now my computer's freaking out. That's okay. Yours doesn't run the recording and the video and everything. You're right, but I have to restart Facebook. Okay. Well, that's that's you know that's manageable. Yeah. Sorry, I was freaking out. What'd you say about Savannah White? I said Vanna White has never worn the same outfit twice on Wheel of Fortune in Dang. the entire time that it's been running. That is a lot of outfits. That's. Im kind of impressive, actually, because she's always in, like, beautiful gowns and stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm amazed that there are that many. Yeah. Uh, that's all. That's it. That's a budget. I'll tell you what. The... Oh, my... Oh, so, random just 13 things... 13 facts about Wheel of Fortune. Oh. The wheel... The wheel weighs 2,400 pounds. Oh, man. Yep. And you have to spin that bitch. Mm. That must be lubed up like a motherfucker. Probably. It's probably got a beautiful uh, uh chassis. I, I was gonna say um uh hydraulic system of some form. Ball bearings even. Yeah, ball bearing. Something like that. Yeah, Vanna White has worn more than five thousand seven hundred gowns on the show. That's so many fucking gowns. Um uh the, some random other facts. Um Pat will always match his tie to Vanna's dress. Um, the shows, they're, they normally tape five or six shows all at once in a single day. About 10,000 people try to get on the show a year and only about 600 do. Nice. Uh, today's puzzle board has been uh, um, remade and it is made up of 52 touchscreen televisions. Ooh. Uh, the first letter Vanna ever turned on the puzzle board was a T. 
That's interesting. Uh, there is only one wheel, and it has to be completely taken apart and put back together if the show ever goes on the road. That 2,000-pound wheel? The entire equipment for the show, because there's only one puzzle board as well. All of the equipment weighs more than 1 million pounds. Uh, yeah, no, fuck that. I'm mucho over that. I didn't, I would not want to be that roadie. Uh, the bonus wheel contains 24 prize envelopes, if you were ever curious. Yeah. And, um, let's see. There is a screen off camera that will tell Pat how many times a chosen letter appears in the puzzle. Originally, they had, um, they had someone off to the side that was known as a finger boy that would tell him how many, how many they would show up. Wait. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a Run that by me one more time. They, it, they came to be known as Finger Boys. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> what, is, what an unfortunate name. Uh, the biggest payout in Wheel of Fortune, this is the last fact, was $1,026,080. Oh, my God. Finger Boys. Yep. That's so bad. Yep. You never call anyone that. Huh, <laughs> so that was enjoyable. Shall we move on to something uh in not so? Sure. Okay. Eight. Trump. Wait, what? Did you say not so? Yeah. No. <laughs> Trump. The United States needs a good shutdown. This was oh, all right. All right. All right. Oh, oh, he's leaving. He's done. He's pulling out his headphones. He's done, people. Everyone, bye, Nathan. So. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 he's red in the face. <laughs> Welcome back. Submitted by by paranoid android tar politics. So, the budget bill for the federal government of the United States is currently slated to be approved this Friday to uh, avoid a government shutdown. However, that bill only funds the federal government to September. So they will have to go into session again and work out the budget again in September. Okay. I have and a question. So okay, go ahead. So is is the president supposed to be the guy that's supposed to help protect everyone in the United States? Um that is one of his responsibilities. Right. So what in your right mind would make you think that the government shutting down would be a good thing like that doesn't protect anyone in the united states okay so here here's the thing though and as much as i dislike trump i do on some levels understand the logic of this statement again most of the things that trump said there is something in there that he is trying to get across that he doesn't understand how to do so so he had all these things that he wanted to do with the budget right none of them got in both sides the republicans and democrats had all this stuff they wanted to do with the budget none of those got in the bud like nothing is really changing at the budget like the the budget is just the, it, it is business as usual basically and so the problem is and is that there's a lot of inaction that happens in, on the legislature's part they fan, fan, managed to come to an agreement that was basically we won't do anything so that we can pass the budget and not have the government shut down. Trump is upset because a lot of the stuff that he wanted to get passed is not getting not getting wanted to get funded is not getting funded. And unfortunately, things like I mean, it was one of the th like we all, we had almost had a government shutdown in Alaska because the governor told them, no, do your jobs. They're like, okay, well, how about this budget? He's like, no, this budget doesn't balance. Do your jobs. And 
on a certain point, you can't just let them keep getting away with just signing off on getting by and moving along. Now, I understand that Trump is saying this because he is basically stomping his feet like a child and the stuff I want funded didn't get funded. But at a certain point, they need to fucking do their job. Right. I understand that. But this is not like I don't believe shutting the government down is going to help that much. It'll be like, oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. We actually really do need to sit down and get together. But I feel like people can can reach that conclusion before it gets to that point. They don't, though. Like uh, the the populace, like the Americans as a, as of like American citizens, we believe that, but the legislators don't. Half the time, they don't even show up to session. It's true, and they have nothing, uh, no other purpose than to be there for that. Like most of them have to travel to session. It isn't like, oh, I have to leave to go do this for such and such. No, you are flown from your state to where I, to Washington D.C. to conduct session with zero other responsibilities. All right, then you just restrict the, the them more instead of the entire fucking government. Here's the thing, though, is that the only way to restrict them is either force them to stay in session. Or convince them through some magical Christmas land to impose restrictions on themselves. Because they're the ones that create those rules. Alright, so we have to, through magical Christmas land, convince them to, to put those rules up. Because it's stupid. That's why term limits don't exist. Because they would have to pass the ruling that would impose term limits. On themselves. So, we just need to convince them to not be assholes anymore by hiring people who aren't hassles go out and vote on your congressmen on your senators on all of them well there's not another vote for about 15 months so that's fine that's plenty of time to do research and prepare sure but that never happens i i don't care that that never happens i'm telling you guys to do it now i understand but I mean, there was so many calls about getting those people out of office and like 97% or something went straight back into their office during the last election. Right, but you can't keep thinking in the negatives. Okay, so we just wait for them to die. That's pretty positive. They, really? Okay. A lot of them are fairly old. It's true. It's good work. Like, by, like, 2050, unless just more old fuckers get elected. Ugh, stop talking. Eventually, we'll be the old fuckers. I don't want to wait that long. Well, that sucks to be you, then. No. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't? No. Oh. I'm pretty fucking lit. Okay, well. Seven. The University of Virginia has announced that it named a campus building in honor of Peyton Skipwith. Who? I'll get there. This is submitted by Eki Patang Zuboing. Zub Zub Hold on. <laughs> Eki Patang Zuboing to our uplifting news. So Peyton Skipwith was one of the slaves that helped build the University of Virginia. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. Well, okay, so not him being a slave that helped build it, but like them naming it after him. That's awesome. Yep, John Hartwell Cock uh, was one of the first members of the university's board of visitors. John Hartwell what? Cock. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you heard it right. Um, he he owned Skipwith at the time back in who got this, in 1833. Well, before then, in 1833, Cock freed Skipwith, his wife, and all of their children, and moved them back to Liberia and Africa. Um, oh, cool. There is a massive descendants of the Skipwith family that all attended the ceremony, and they are very proud that that name is being given to the building. That's awesome. This is some super uplifting news. Yeah, it's cool. That's that's some fucking history right there recognition of like it, it's nice because it, it doesn't necessarily feel like just a pure oh our bad it's like a an, a honest recognition of an accomplishment that someone did at a bad time yeah definitely so yeah it'll be the skip with building that's awesome and their family members are all for it too that's super cool yeah they get a building named after him 
Well, not after them, after their ancestor. By their family, how about that? Yeah, there you go. Sure. I need to hit a button. Uh, that one. Six. Congress gives Jeff Sessions zero dollars to go after medical marijuana laws. This was submitted by Svit to our politics. So Jeff Sessions, uh, Attorney General for the United States of America, who is, you know, just so against marijuana, he said that oh, good people don't smoke marijuana and pot is only slightly less awful than heroin. God damn it. He was hoping for some funding this year to help fight marijuana. Um, but Congress, since 2014, has been passing the same little bit of language in the budget bill every year. And it says, none of the funds made available in the act of the Department of Justice may be used with respect to any state of all of the 50 states, um, including Col uh, District of Columbia, Guam, or Puerto Rico, to prevent any of them from implementing their own laws that authorize the use, distribution, possession, or cultivation of medical marijuana. So it basically goes... You can't use money for this. Let the states deal with it. It's not our problem. I I think it's kind of funny. Uh, I was just thinking about um, a marijuana lingo term that I, I thought is fucking so ironic in this scenario. I'm listening. Okay, so there's this website called Sesh Roulette. Okay. The point of the website is to sit down with people and do a chat roulette service, but where you sit there and smoke with other people. For people who, who don't have anybody to smoke with so that you can have, like, a smoke circle. All, uh, you know, that 70s show, you know. Yeah, sure, I get it. P people like it. It's, it's a, it I, I'll, I'll admit that when, when I was smoking, it was one of my favorite favorite things to do is to sit in a circle with people and just fucking shoot, shoot the shit, essentially. Yeah, sure. It's a good feeling. Um. So, anyways. It's all we're doing. We just give ourselves topics to talk about that are important. Yeah. Um. So, sesh roulette is short for smoke sesh. Just short for smoke session as in Jeff Sessions I find it ironic so how are you going to implement this lingo or or is or are you just making or are you just addressing the connection I was just addressing the connection fair enough I didn't need to implement it I mean everyone already calls it a sesh anyways sure and smoke sesh. he's never gonna get anywhere with that no of course not five Atlanta commits to 100% renewable energy by 2035. This was submitted by Wagamaga to our po uh, futurology. Wagamaga, 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 Wagamaga. Make America great again? Uh, sure. Waga? I'm not sure what Waga means. Um, Wombo America great again. Sure, okay. We'll go with that. Either way, there's not a lot to say past the topic, but Atlanta has become the 27th city in the United States, um, the first that, the first in Georgia, to pledge to become a 100% renewable energy city. Their goal is to be accomplish that by 2035, so in the next 18 years, they hope to be completely on renewable energy sources. I was watching that, um, that uh, Bill Nye thing earlier. Sure. Uh, I do agree with people that he can, can be kind of overly left wing but at the same time like i feel like the science is too too there he just presents it in a in a in a way that some people would find insufferable well and here here's the thing is that like i have no doubts that like all of the clean energy stuff you know renewable energy the the world is no longer reliant on coal and oil i have no doubt that we will get there yeah. No doubt whatsoever. The question is, how quickly do we get there? And do we get there soon enough? I forget the time period that Bill and I... Uh, um, yeah, I agree with Kendall. Bill and I pokes at people when he doesn't need to. Um, but I think he said... I think he was like 2025 or something. When he was 25? No, 2025 is when we should have 80% of, of like renewable coal sort. and coal. Sure. Yeah, we need to reduce our our um was it carbon footprint essentially by 80 percent in order to preserve the world world ecosystem yeah without the world dying beyond repair see and i don't i don't think we'll make it i i don't think so either i mean we we're making good progress and more and more things and you know countries and and cities and stuff are committing to it 
I do agree with him with one thing, though. He was talking about how one of the biggest things that America does is, is it exports its culture, essentially. And so if America got on this bandwagon of let's be green, like everyone was for it, then it would be pushed out more into the world and more people would start to follow it. Well, and when we are, it's just a, like it's a slow train. Like, right, we just got to get more people on the trend. We got to make it trendy. Well, and in a lot of ways it is, but the the wrong companies are looking at it as trendy. Well, right. I mean, because we do have Google and Apple and those countries on board. And while those are the biggest companies, you need I, – I don't know who you need. Just more, I guess? Let's get, like, let's get more Disney in it. Let's get uh, Walmart making uh, affordable, recyclable products. Um, more accessible, even. You know, with as massive as Walmarts are, I bet they could... Who the fuck is ringing my doorbell right now? Um, is it Josh? I, it's probably Josh. I'll go check it in just a second. Um, but, fuck it. Hang on, just a second. Uh, talk about something important. Okay, so, like, in my opinion, I feel like one of the first steps to making this renewable energy source more more abundant is... is this guy, he was talking on the on the show, and I feel like it's kind of cool. I don't know if if he was accurate in in how early he can get it implemented, but like he was talking about that he had mapped out the entire United States and like 130 other countries where he would f put specific areas where you know like water um, hydroelectric would be more um, beneficial or or um, the the air current ones. I forget the the term for it. Um, but he essentially had mapped out the entire thing for the United States, and all we had to do was implement it. And I feel like that's cool that someone, you know, took the time to do that because that's an important thing. And, and I feel like it, it should be implemented more um, with with how dangerous some other things are. It would create jobs, you know, it will create the infrastructure that we need to progress further without damaging the Earth more. Because the Earth is the most important thing. Yeah, we want to get to other planets and cool shit, but that doesn't mean we should just forgo Earth. Like, that's our roots. Earth goes hard. You know, I think uh, with as big as Walmarts are, if they just put solar panels on all over the roofs... Josh, how did you join the show? You literally just left my house. Incidentally, he walked in, hugged my face twice, and handed me a, a box of sushi and ran out the door. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's the best friend ever that literally shows up for no reason but to hug you and give you food. Best friend ever. I see how it is. Well, you can't do that. You don't have a car or money. Whatever. <laughs> he did. He didn't stay to do the podcast with me, so that automatically makes you better. Whatever. He saw that. He heard. You're gonna start a flame war between me and him. Stop it. Good. I want you to fight. No, I'm not doing it. No. No. He's bigger. I'm small. <laughs> it, it is important, though. But I just we we need more fuel on that fire i guess yeah we we need more people to realize that it's it's a better idea in the long run it'll see the, this is the thing is people keep thinking in, in like fiscal years and and they think they think in in um reports or uh fucking financial reports and they just very very small minded and not small minded like their time frame is just so narrow they, they aren't thinking ahead enough and I don't know, for someone who's in, who for people who invest in things, you would think that they would start investing in something that that in the long run would be more beneficial. Well, there's also a large number of people that don't believe it and a large number of people that are that even that, that can see it and are specifically fighting against it. Right. And, and he addressed that, too. He is like, yeah, there's like a, a percentage of like there's like two to three percent chance that it would fail or something like that. And. And it's like that's two to three percent, and people are latching onto that, that. That that that's like a hundred percent, like. Well, and also like the the coal and oil people, they, they like it completely undermines their everything. They just need to start investing in things other than coal and oil. Well, I mean, they have all their eggs in one basket, but it was a damn good basket. Right, but that means that doesn't mean they can't start spending some of that money that they've saved up into other baskets. I'm with, sure. Yeah. More chances of putting eggs in. We'll we'll see what happens. I mean, they're like, oh shit, my eggs are you know starting to rot and die out. Let's start putting them in other baskets so that those eggs that are rotten and dying can no longer infect the newer eggs that aren't rotten and dying. Well, and we should. Everything's see... evolving. Like 
Well, and we'll see either. Well, no, there, I don't, I don't. There's not a positive word to present. We will see the repercussions in ten, twelve years. Yeah, yeah, we will. Like we already are in some ways with the Great Barrier Reef. Um, that's the the Great Barrier Reef is going to disappear. It will you it it's it's going to be dead it's and gone. Dead. Um, it's not dead yet, but it's it. I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. Do we need? Oh, that's what that's what we need. We need that. Okay, uh, I will t I, I will type that in. <laughs> We're just gonna have a fuckload of goddamn uh, Monty Python clips. Uh, is that a problem? Are uh, you complaining? No. Fucking heathen. I'm not dead yet. Okay, I'll, I'll I, I put that in there to hopefully uh, remind myself. Mind you. Yeah. Yep. Pinned. Yep. Totally did. Cool. Because why not? A word. We'll see, though. I mean, it, it it's unfortunate that more like more seriously negative things will have to happen for people to realize and understand it. But that's what's gonna end up having to happen. It's like you know, people don't latch on to a cause or make things change until someone dies, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what it is. I agree with Kendall. Fucking Bill Nye is too sassy. That's the proper word for it. See, I, I wonder how much, like, it, is this all pr specifically pertaining to his new show on Netflix? Yeah. I wonder how much of that is him and how much of that is the people running the show. Have you heard any of his other, like, debates and everything? No. It's It's totally him. I mean, and also, I mean, he's not, he's not dumb. And the reason that I, I say that is because say, being sassy, being direct, and, 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 you know, pointing fingers or poking people that don't necessarily need the finger or anything like that, that builds a level of controversy that, and attention that you might not get otherwise. Right. So, I mean, it's unfortunate, but drama equals attention. Right. I guess if you're if you're a drama queen, you get enough people to see. It's probably why Kim Kardashian's so famous. Probably. Also, you know, there's that whole naked thing. Oh yeah. Yep. Four. Microbiologists have discovered that two fungal species cooperate to synthesize an antibiotic that kills MRSA as well as the bacteria that cause anthrax and strep throat. This was submitted by Ionice. Our science. You can call it MRSA. Can you? Yeah. A lot of people call it MRSA. Okay. So a friend of mine recently got MRSA. So hang on. So when when I read through this, um MRSA is short MRSA is short for methylcillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. Mm -hmm. Which is that different from a staph infection? Mm, I don't know. Because I, I'm not a fucking doctor, all right? I'm a goddamn pool man. Well, hang on. Staph infection. Because it, isn't that Staphylococcus? Yeah. Right. So Staphylococcus aureus is just a staph infection, but I'm guessing MRSA, which is meth, mes, methicillin resistant, means that you can't get rid of it? As easily. Okay. I'm guessing that's, that's the difference then, because... Yeah, Staphylococcus aureus is just a staph infection. Either way, so it sounds like a dinosaur. Things like it's science lingo. Well, not lingo. It's not lingo at all. Like calling it a staph infection is is more like layman's terms. But it's it's the scientific naming of things. So you know how like penicillin I is made, it. right? Penicillin is is a is grown as a form of mold. It's a fungi mm. that then we harvest the, the. Hey, it's a fun guy. Yeah, and it keeps people from dying. Well, hey, what a fun guy. Most of the time, microbes f to grow new fungi or just to test fungi are grown in a pure culture, which means that it's a clean environment. There's nothing that can... Oh, man. You got to be careful throwing around pure culture. There's there's nothing that can disturb them. There's that no, started a world war. There's no, <laughs> there's no other plants or anything nearby. Wait. Why did you... Who... Did you pin I didn't vote for you? Yeah. Okay. There could only be one pinned comment. I noticed after I pinned, I didn't vote for you. <laughs> okay. I, I will just try to remember to get them both. Either way, so they decided that they're going to start trying uh, growing microbes in dual cultures. So have them grow next to each other or in more extreme conditions. They specifically found that the P. fuscum and P. camembertii... 
All right, hold up. You're butchering these. I need to look at these. F U S C U N. Fuscum. 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 And, Fuscum. And P. Camemberti. Camembert. Camemberti Cam Cam and Clavigium. Sure. These are extremophiles. Clavigerium. Shut the fuck up. You aren't I'll doing kill any you, better. Son of a bitch. Fight me, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> so fight me, you long ass bitch. They're, they're, these are both extremophiles, which means they love strong and extreme environmental conditions. In this case, specifically, extremely acidic and metal rich environments. When they grew together, they grew a new culture, and this new formula, which is being called Berkelesilat. Wow, Burke A Lay Lactone. Burkle Lactone A. There you go. Yep, Burkle Lactone. Berkeley Berkeley Lactone? Berkeley Lactone? Sure, whatever. Probably named after Berkeley. Anyway, it's able to block the growth of things like MRSA as well as the bacteria that cause strep throat and anthrax. So it's a major development. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google this because I, I I'm almost positive it's it's based, it's named after Ber Berkeley. Berkeley who? Like the the school Berkeley. Okay, why does this matter? I it matters to me. It does not. Yeah, it does. It doesn't. All that you yeah, need to know is that science is happening and things are good in the world. University of California Berkeley. <laughs> are you done? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Three. Protesters threw Pepsi cans at police during May Day demonstrations. Oh, this is submitted by Stumble Dumpus to R Not the Onion. <laughs> so. Pepsi recently had an ad starring Kendall, oh, starring Kendall oh, we Jenner. We talked about it. We well, talked about it. Yeah, that. Uh, well, we're going to talk about it again for just a quick moment. And that there, the the idea was is that there was a protest happening, and Kendall Jenner walks up to one of the pro the police that are trying to monitor the protest and hands him a Pepsi, and then everything is good. Everything is great. The Everything's K. Yeah, and like the, the the ad was slammed because people were like, are you trying to say that Pepsi leads to world peace and that if we all would just drink a Pepsi, there wouldn't be problems anymore? Like it was a horrible ad campaign for Pepsi. Well, since then, it's be, kind of become a meme that Pepsi would just you just it's the answer to all problems. And so there was a May Day protest in which there was a pro labor anti Trump rally rally in Oregon. And that rally turned into a violent protest um, in which property is being damaged, blah, 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 all that same stuff. And people started hurling objects, including full Pepsi cans, at officers and other officials. I saw a gif of a protester handing a Pepsi can to, to a cop, and the cop was like, sick, thanks, and chucked it into the crowd. That's pretty great. Yeah, no, that, that sounds about right. I mean, it was a very dangerous food fight. Yeah, this was too. Yeah. Here's the thing, um, and like, there's not a lot to say about about this past the hilarity that it is, is that protesting, if you start flipping police cars, which they did, if you start smashing police cars, which they did, if you start destroying private it no property, no longer a protest; it is a riot. Yeah. And that that benefit you you have lost all probable support for your cause. Whatever you were protesting against doesn't matter. Yeah. You, you have ruined it. You've become the child who is stomping your feet and throwing your toys. Yeah, pretty much. And so, stop it. Like the people, like we've had two of these break out now. Oh, at colleges because Milo Yiannopoulos was going to talk and then fucking what what the fuck is bitch's name Donald Trump <laughs> No uh damn I can't remember her name we talked about it last week but Tommy either Lauren no. Ann Coulter Ann Coulter that's it 
there was a their riots broke out over her coming to speak and it's like seriously people you're allowed to protest and make your statement but the moment you start breaking shit that being said the people who are going out and breaking shit on purpose don't be that dick bag yeah that's what i'm saying stop breaking shit you're ruining it for everybody else because there's a lot of people who are legitimately protesting. Well, and here's the th other thing is, and, and maybe people know this, is you can have 100,000 protesters. You can have a million protesters. And if, but you're all just whiny children who didn't get their way. Well, and if 10 of those... snowflakes. Well, if 10 of those protesters go out and start destroying shit, you have now ruined the power and voice of the other 999,990 people. Right, because everyone's going to focus on the bad assholes. Or just the extreme moment. Right, exactly. So, yeah, quit it. Although, throwing Pepsi cans at the police, that's just funny. That's just <laughs> fucking meme-worthy. Well, you, it's, it's just embracing a meme. North Korea has vowed to accelerate its nuclear weapons program to maximum pace and test a nuclear device, quote, at any time. This was submitted 18 hours ago by Madam One to Our World News. God damn it, North Korea. So speaking of people stomping their feet. Oh, God. So, I don't want to be put in the draft. So this has been in response to Donald Trump's aggressive stance towards the... Uh, what, what, what is it actually called? The People's Republic of North Korea? Is that what it's called? The, Demo the Democratic People's Republic. The DPRK. Sure. It is, <laughs> they it have is, DP in their name. It is not democratic. It is the double penetration republic of Korea. Either way, uh, this warning came as U.S. military officials said a controversial missile defense system was now operational. A missile? 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 Mi miss it's a missile. Uh, we got to take out a missile. Quick, Q, get me some new tools. It's a missile. Anyway. Um, go home and slap my wife. <laughs> That's bad. The terminal Sean Connery. The terminal high altitude area defense system, or THOD, um, has been built and established nor right near the North Korean border in South Korea. There was a lot of work to get this defense system implemented because China wasn't real big on it existing, <laughs> and also there's the question of who was going to pay for it. Ah, we decided to pay for it and build it and stick it in there, and so now we have a, a an entire defense system devoted to shooting down missiles near South Korea. That's good. It is not completely operational. It currently only has the ability to intercept North Korean missiles, but it should have the rest of its capabilities built and put in within the next year. That's good. And this has upset North Korea. Oh, I wonder why. Can't imagine... Why? It's it's not because North Korea is being a dickbagger, is it? No, that's exactly why. Yeah, yeah. It's that that's why. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, totally. They and they know it. Do they? I think so. They got to, don't they? I hope so. Like at this point they have to fucking know. That's not true. I know. No, do you? No, um I um you know nothing, Jon Snow. Uh, do I? I don't think I want to be Jon Snow. Nobody wants to be Jon Snow. N Jon Snow doesn't want to be Jon Snow. Can you want to know why? Because he can't even die without somebody to be like, mm, you know what? You still need a lot of work to do. You need to go do something. Kendall in chat room says, why is everyone so mean to North Korea? They just want to shoot missiles. Right? They just want to, uh, like, this, uh, no problem. Let them, you know, fire their six gun. That's cool. As long as they don't fire on anybody. Uh, I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> I, I'll i let them have the liberty to go and, and have a gun. But as soon as they start firing at me, I swear to God, I'm going to have to murder them. One. All right, let's talk about something we haven't talked about yet. YouTube star Daddy of Five loses custody of two children featured in prank videos. This was submitted by, oh my fucking god, Florida, to our news. <laughs> oh my fucking god, Florida. Uh, this does not have to do with Florida, though. Um, this, I, I believe they're in Minnesota anyway. Not important. Cold like Minnesota. So, if you haven't heard about this yet, there is a YouTube channel called Daddy of Five. 
they were a scripted prank channel, as they tried to claim, in which they continuously ran pranks on their own family, the majority of which are on their children. The youngest of which is Cody, who is an eight-year-old, who is, does not take pranks very well, especially because some of these pranks are crazy and involve the parents yelling. Well, what, do, what, do, what do they do, Michael? I read this earlier. I had no idea these people existed. I read this earlier, and I almost threw up. Yep. They yell and scream at their kids, and I don't mean like, don't do that. You shouldn't do that. No, they scream profanity and tell them about how worthless they are. They push and hit their children. There is piles upon piles of video evidence of them screaming multiple expletives about how terrible their kids are to their kids over pranks that they set up themselves so that they could yell at the kids. There's video of them encouraging the kids to hit one another. There are videos of the kids throwing one another. There are videos of him pushing his own kid into a bookshelf and hitting his own child. Pictures of him, or there's videos of him smashing his children's toys and, and everything in front of them while they're crying with a fucking ball peen hammer. So, if you want good coverage of this and the full story, because I don't really have the stomach to go over this again, and if you, I, I would go watch Philip DeFranco's videos. He did a damn near an entire goddamn week on it, because it was brought to his attention, and he came from a, an, a he, he came from an abusive childhood, and he's like, if that's real, I can't allow that to exist, um, and. A lot of the authorities didn't know that those videos were happening, and they had already been investigated once before, and they, the authorities found out that ever, had decided everything was fine, but it's because it's a lot, it's easy to make things look okay to authorities when they just walk into the door. Right. The video evidence has been presented, um, the, the parents have been arrested, two of the two emergency custody of two of the children have been granted over to their biological mother, and that case is now pending. Here's what the, about the other kids, though? Don't know yet. Here is the thing on this. And it's... If you see a child in distress, say something. It's one thing when there are four college guys that are all pulling pranks on one another on YouTube. Right, or a guy and his girlfriend. Whatever. If you see someone pranking an eight-year-old child and videotaping that child crying and screaming over things they didn't do for the sake of clicks. There's, there's a difference between America's Funniest Home Videos and malicious content. Yeah. And America's Funniest Home Videos are normally, you know, like, one funny moment that was an accident. Mm -hmm. And even then, like... A lot of the times, the accidents where the children start crying, people immediately start going to them and trying to help them out. Not instead continue holding a camera and pointing and yelling at them about what they've done wrong. Exactly. If you see this, and now if you want to go look at the evidence of this, um, most of it's been taken down. All their videos have been privatized or deleted off of their YouTube channel. I just advise if you just want more information, go to Philip DeFranco's channel and just... Just go look at it there. It's real easy to find. It was all done last week. Apparently, all his fans are on Twitter are like they're like witch hunting Philip because he he really brought light to the situation. And that's what disgusts me almost more than the family themselves. This man and his wife are borderline tormenting or just straight up are abusing their children. They had hundreds of thousands of views on those videos. Literally hundreds of thousands and no one truly said or did anything until Philip DeFranco made the move to address the problem and bring attention to it and provide evidence to local authorities of what was happening. And then when that happened and the authorities started pursuing the case and seeing just how bad the situation were, there were people defending them. It's despicable. Now, like, I know people that get angry and grumpy about the fake prank channels like Fousey Tube and shit that they set up pranks some of which are even 
uh, culturally insensitive or racially charged. I mean, right, like, like the like the guy dressed like a Middle Eastern individual going around and like throwing a briefcase on the ground or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, I mean, also one of the ones they did was they and this was a set up social scenario of he drove put a car with a bunch of Trump stickers and stuff on it, and then. Phil filmed what happened when that car was left in the wrong neighborhood and then a bunch of black guys came up and destroyed the car. He paid them and instructed and choreographed them to do that. I can understand hating on that. It's also like when people hate on comedians for making jokes and stuff like that. But when it's on that level, that is a form of entertainment that is of a that is done by adults for adults. Mm-hmm. If a comedian says an, a, an insensitive joke, understand that it's a joke. If someone does an insensitive skit, whether it's on YouTube or Saturday Night Live, understand that it is a skit. If someone is literally abusing their child for the sake of video monetization, I do not understand how you com- can commend that, and you are a disgusting fuck to me. Read the thing Kendall said. Kendall in the chat room says, a lot of people hate children. My friend and I just recently started a Facebook group about the phenomenon we call childism, which is people thinking children are inferior to adults, thus justifying abuse against them. Uh, that, that one is a wonderful group that you have started. Um, and two, like, I understand not wanting children or not wanting to deal with children. That is understandable. Like, I have a seven-year-old daughter, and there are some days that I'm just like, oh my god, I cannot wait for you to be an adult because you are, you're, you're a kid. And sometimes kids, it just, that they are innocent and have not experienced the, the evils and the, the trials. Harsh reality. Of- They've not stared into the void for hours like I have yeah. watched it stare back at me. No, 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 that's exactly right. And so it's like, but... They don't understand a lot of the time, and it can be frustrating as an adult when a kid doesn't understand. Right. That doesn't no, mean me. um, that you yell at them and throw them and push them. I definitely asked a lot of stupid things as a kid, and I always thought that when nobody answered my questions that I had stumped them. But nope. Nope, a lot of the time it's I, I asked something incredibly stupid, and they thought it was incredibly stupid and didn't justify answering it. Yeah, because I've I've done that at at the boys and girls club. It's like it's a natural reaction to some question. You're like, sure, you should go back and explain why that that that's not, you know, really a thing, or you should explain the situation so the kid learns. But that doesn't like, I I don't know. You can only do so much. E- exactly. And it's it's like that meme. I was constantly that SpongeBob meme where he's like inhale sharply, boy. I was constantly doing that at the Boys and Girls Club when kids would tell me about things. I believe it. But all of that is vastly different to this situation. Yeah, but, yeah, no. These guys were malicious. So and their children their children were not doing anything. Yep. I, I had specifically been avoiding it because I wanted to see how it panned out. Um, and this has been the result of it. And that is that, that this, this is the desired result because I don't, I don't care if the content was scripted. That is not the kind of scripted content you put a child through. Mm. Also, fuck you. It wasn't scripted. No, I don't believe worth shit that it was scripted. May like you scripted it to the point that you set up a prank and then Put it on your child and then harass them over it. But I don't believe shit past that. Yeah. But it, it's being taken care of and dealt with. And I wish those kids the best. And I hope that they are able to recover from this. Because it does not take much to traumatize a person. Whether it is even an adult. But children, it's even easier. Mm-hmm. So... I, um, I'm done with this. I'm done. Yeah. We're, let, let, let's move on to other things. Hey, Nathan. Not ah, shit. That ah, fucking shit. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. What'd you care about in the last 24 hours? Um, I had the song stuck in my head all day and it's still stuck in my head. What song? It's that new Paramore song, Hard Times. I have not heard this. I will need to fix that. Here, I have it right here. Well, uh, I, I, I could you, play it. Do you want me to just stick it on in the background? Yeah, here. I'm, I'm going to put it there. 
Um, that, that, it's stu it's stuck in my head. That um, does mean like so little good. I don't know if I can even get to that on the iPad. Oh, I didn't realize you were doing it on the iPad. Well, if you want to be able to hear it too, I have to. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. And, and I'll turn the iPad down. Um, and we'll but get, yeah, no, it, we'll it's, get this flagged it's, it's, on YouTube immediately. That's fine. Yeah, I um, know. We'll just quiet that bit on the YouTube one. But it's it's stuck in my head constantly, and it's got me thinking, like, I've been way too apathetic recently, and I really need to start doing stuff. So I, I picked up my Pokemon game again. I started playing that. Uh, I was listening to some, some Eternal podcasts so I can start playing that again. I really want to pick up a game competitively and, and really try. Um, I don't know. I just... Want to do more? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know that same feeling. Like, I had a somewhat of an emotional breakdown on Saturday because I'd been trying to draw on my iPad, but when you don't know how to draw, that's already frustrating. But there is the whole thing of if you keep practicing and stuff, you will get better. But when it comes to digital programs, that is not applicable because you have to learn and understand how to use those programs, right? Sure. And I just kept on infuriating myself over not understanding how to make a discount Photoshop do what I wanted to and trying to look up how to do those things there are not enough resources online that explain how to do those and so I realized I wasn't enjoying it and had just been wasting hours at a time and it just kind of like depressed me super hard and I'm still trying to like push that away like Luckily, once Sunday rolled around, I was able to recover a lot from it, but it's still like this grate on my mind that I don't really know how to get rid of. Yeah, I understand. I was, I hit a block in Eternal, like I just didn't find anything fun. Actually, I hit a block in general, I, just, I didn't find any game really fun. Well, and that's like, I want to do productive things, I want to do creative things, but there's so many hurdles in the way, and a lot of it is either time or money, and so... Like, today, I got home and technically had the time to do stuff, but I just kind of sat here and looked at shit on Facebook when, for, like, an hour and a half. Yeah, I know. I watched, I fucking watched a movie and an episode of something that I didn't really care about. And you're like, well, this was a waste of life. Yeah. Well, I mean, ultimately, I thought the movie was funny and the episode was pretty good, so it wasn't too big of a waste, but it could have been doing something that I had already... You know, uh, put something, put more energy into something I've already started instead of doing something completely new. Yeah. Yeah, I just become disenfranchised too easily. Well, and also, like, I, I don't know. Some things feel so intangible or so far out of reach that you, or are so massive that you just don't know what the first step is. Yeah, you're, you're just overwhelmed. And so, like, I mean, video games, it's always easy to just pick up and play a video game. Exactly. But it's like, okay, well, what if I want to do that video game, like, on a YouTube series? It's like, okay, that, that'd that be something I would totally be down to do. It's like, okay, well, how, how do I do that? And then your brain goes, fuck, I don't know. Fuck it, let's just play the game. I, I, really, I really need to clean my apartment. I cleaned under my couch and everything, and I feel like after I clean my apartment, I can really start focusing on that, because the, the mess is bothering me, but I just, I get so not into it well yeah you lose a you, like you get disheartened and lose a lot of motivation as soon as you come home yeah exactly like you're you're at work and you're like yeah i'm gonna go home and i'm gonna do that and you get home and you're like god fuck this, this you're like is... i'm gonna i i did a long day of work I'm, even if it's four hours i'm just gonna sit here and watch a couple episodes of something and then and then the next thing you know you're asleep and then you wake up at like five and you're just like well everyone's awake and i can't really do anything because everyone's doing other stuff so yeah so when you're moving in, Nathan. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. Oh, that's significantly quieter because I turned it down for the YouTube video. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, the thing I cared about is that it is the Marvel Cinematic Universe's somewhat birthday. Um, today. How old is it? Uh, technically only like w w nine years old. Yeah, nine. That's almost old enough to drink. Why? What? Nine? Yeah. It, it's got 12 years to go. Yeah, I, I mean, in, like, Germany. Okay. In Germany, it's almost enough. I, I still think you have to be, like, 16 in Germany. Well, you'd be earlier. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, ability and legal to do so are different. Whatever. Anyway, uh, the first entry of the Marvel Cinematic Universe was 2008's Iron Man. That 
re was released. What? In... Yeah. Blade is not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No. The fuck is this shit? The the current Marvel Cinematic Universe started nine years ago. Stupid. I'm sorry. I need Blade in this bitch. Because fucking holy shit, those movies were awesome. Ex even the third one, where it was complete shit because Wesley Snipes was uh, only only on, on set less than half the, the time that, that they were filming. He was constantly in his trailer getting fucking completely blazed, so all of the scenes that you see him in, he's completely ripped out of his mind. That... A lot of the scenes... Like, there's the scene where he's sitting in the car with... um. With Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Reynolds is sit just sitting there making bunch of, bunches of quips, and he just like looks at him, and he's like, "I've had enough of this shit." Except he doesn't say anything; it's just that look. Well, he he had that look because he was <laughs> amazingly blazed, and he had to try and pretend that he he didn't like the scenario. And um, and uh, fucking uh, the other half of the time he wasn't even there. So fucking Ryan Reynolds was just talking to himself in a car, which is why it was so fucking hilarious because it was Ryan Reynolds. Because Ryan Reynolds, yeah. Yeah, and then it got to a point where, like, he started thinking he was Blade himself, and so the, the director of the movie hired bodyguards to, to threaten to rough him up if he continued to do it, and he stopped being as big of a dickhead, but still kind of a dickhead. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Well, it's a great movie. We're at an hour and ten minutes. Um, Let's keep going. We, we've already gone over the, the thing. Let's go for another, you know, like three hours. Dude, we got to work and tomorrow. Ten. Three hours and ten minutes. We gotta make it an even four twenty. No. No. You're sleepy, I'm sleepy. No. I'm already falling asleep. I know, I can see it. That's why I said no, that. You can't. Shut up. Okay. Anyway, so let's get the hell out of here. First off, everybody, if you enjoyed this show, uh, it ended up being a little bit long and thank you for sticking through it if you are still here. Um, if you'd like to help support this show, um, the way that I would immediately ask you is to support us with maybe a dollar a month, two, three, four, five dollars a month. Patreon.com slash daily internet. It helps us pay for the show because the show costs us money every month. It helps us buy new equipment. I desperately need to upgrade my computer, but I do not have the funds to do so. If you are interested in helping that happen, please go to patreon.com slash daily internet to look into helping us out. Otherwise, as we noted at the top of the show, we haven't read much fan mail or fan. I don't want to call it fan mail, listener mail, because I want to know what you guys think. I want to hear articles that you thought were important that we didn't talk about. Things like that. You can send us an email to our inbox, which is feedback.ireda at gmail.com or call and leave us a voicemail if, you, if that's easier and quicker for you. 508-738-2278. Otherwise, find us on social media. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. All of those are at iRidicast. We go live every night on Facebook at 10 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And, yeah, Kevin McLeod does our music at Incompetech.com. If you want to, wherever you're listening to the show now, they, we also have it available on YouTube if you want to watch the video, but you couldn't catch the, the Facebook. The video is also available on Facebook. Otherwise, um, the audio versions are available on the website, which is uh, mjolnir.media slash iReddit. Otherwise, you can find it on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, basically everywhere. That's it. Yeah, let's get the hell out of here, everybody. That is your 280th dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwann. Uh, I'm awake. Hi, awake. I'm, yeah. All right. That's it, everybody. Have a good day. Goodbye.